welcome back to my third class on statistical quality control now in the last two classes we have discussed about statistical quality control it has got two parts product control and process control product control deals with the assurance of quality with respect to incoming raw materials and outgoing finished goods whereas process controls deals with assuring the quality of the process which operates on the raw material to see whether the process is under control now now by process being under control we mean that the process parameters are controlled right so if the process parameters are deviating from their threshold values the outputs which will come out of the process will not be good so if we want to um, have the good outputs from the process i have to see that my process parameters are at their threshold values now we have seen in the last uh, class that there are uh, four variables we have got mean chart and range chart as i have told you that in order to see whether the process is under control or not we take the help of control charts for four variables that means the quality characteristics which can be measured the control charts used are mean chart and range chart and for variables uh, sorry for attributes that means quality characteristics which cannot be measured for that we have used uh, uh, three types of chart p chart and p chart and c chart right now suppose there are uh, five processes which are to be carried out so the outputs which come out from the process 1 is the input for process 2 now in case of variables since the measuring the variables each time is very time consuming process so uh, nowadays or for the last few years comparators are used comparators may be manual comparators or robotic comparators so if the comparators found the outputs from process 2 to be okay it is passed to process 1 to be okay it is passed on to process 2 as the input of process 2 if the outputs from process 1 is not found to be okay by the comparators it is being scrapped this is how the process is being under control now uh, after having my second class i got few questions rather how to solve uh, or to give some examples on this p chart and np chart so today we will be discussing few examples on p chart np chart c chart and then i will proceed further now this is an example on uh, related to attributes suppose the number of defectives in 20 samples each containing 2000 items are given so these are the number of defectives uh, 425 430 that means there are 20 samples sample size is 2000 the first sample contains 425 defectives out of 2000 2000 items right now these figures are given and we have to state whether the process is control or not process is in control or not now how to understand whether it's a case of p chart or np chart see in this case the number of sample is 20 so k is 20 sample size is 2000 right when the sample size is given definitely it's a case of p chart in case of c chart the sample size will not be given now in this case each sample contains fixed number of sample item or sample size that is 2000 so either we can use p chart or np chart to solve this problem let's see how to do it So here we have got all the samples 1 to 20. The number of defectives as given in the problem are shown here. So total number of defectives, if we add them together, it comes to be 6148. Now what is the fraction defective? In case of P chart, P stands for fraction defective. So fraction defective is nothing but number of defectives divided by the sample size. In our case, sample size is 2000. So fraction defective for the first case will be 425 divided by 2000. That comes to be 0.2125. Similarly, for the second case, the sample uh, fraction defective will be 430 divided by 2000, and this is how we get the fraction defective for all the samples. If you add them together, this is summation of p's, right? These are p's. Now, as we know that in case of p chart, what we have to plot, we have to plot the p's. So, if we are trying to draw p chart, definitely each of these values we have to find out because we have to plot these values. Got it? Now. p chart if i'm talking about since it's a case of fixed sample size we can solve the problem either by p chart or by np chart if we are trying to solve by p chart what will be my central line yes it will be p bar p bar means what p bar means summation of all p's divided by number of samples summation of all p's are what this is 
summation of all p's divided by number of samples so 3.074 divided by 20 either you can use this to get the value of p bar or p p bar will be summation of p's divided by k or p summation of d by n where d stands for number of defectives so if since the n is constant you can take out n that means it becomes p bar equals to summation of defectives divided by n into k that means summation of all the defectives summation of all the defectives that is to be divided by number of uh, samples that is k and number of sample size that is 2000 so 6148 by 20 into 2000 that will also give you the value of p bar so there are two ways of calculating p bar you can choose either of these two to get the value of p bar once p bar is calculated we know what next we have to do we have to find out ucl and we have to find out lcl just see this since as you know that we are passing through a very tough time of COVID-19 due to this COVID-19 virus. So I'm having this class with the very limited resources what I'm having at present at my home. So only this much resources I'm having at home. So you have to bear with me. Oh no. Okay. Now UCL and LCL, you know, formula UCL is P bar plus 3 into square root of P bar 1 minus P bar divided by N whole square root. So if you put all these values, UCL comes to be 1 .1779, LCL comes to be 0 0.1295, right? Now next is we have to plot the charts. As we know, we have already plotted few charts in my last class. So P bar is given. UCL is given, LCL is given, you have to choose the scale in such a way that all UCL values, LCL values and all my P-bar values can be plotted and then we can see whether the process is under control or not, right? So if you plot it, that is your home task, you do it at your home and find and you will find that the process is not under control. Since it's a case of p-chart, uh, since it's a case of fixed sample size, the same problem can be solved by np-chart also. Their NP chart means what will be my central line? NP bar. Now N bar will be is nothing but N only. So NP bar, my central line will be NP bar. P bar we have already calculated. If you multiply by N, that is 2000, you get CL value, UCL value, and LCL value. Right? Formula were also already given to you in the, my last class. So just put in the formula and you will get the values for uh, CL, UCL, and LCL. And again, this is a home assignment for you. Uh, you. Try to plot it out. If you find any problem, you can always WhatsApp me or your questions or put your uh, this questions in the feedback form or in the comment form. Uh, in the comments, I will take care of. So this, if you plot, you will find that the process is not under control. So this is how we have plotted P chart or uh, NP chart. Now this is an example of C chart. Here, what is given? Number of defects, note here it is not defectives, rather defects. Number of defects noted in 20 pieces of wool and goods are given, right? State whether the process is in control. Now, how to understand that we have to follow C chart? Number one, here no measurements are given, just the number of defects are given in each of the sample. So, since how many samples are there? 20 samples are there. Is there any sample size specified? No. Only the number of defects in each of the sample is specified. Since the sample size is not given, definitely you can understand this. This, are, this is an example of C chart. So it's very clear that C chart, that means we have to plot C's. And C's are nothing but the number of defects. So all these things are to be plotted. Very, uh, okay. Now, CL will be in case of C chart, it will be C bar, upper control limit. Formula wise, it is C bar plus 3 into square root of C bar. And LCL will be C bar minus square root of C bar. So if you get these values. One important thing to be note here is that LCL is coming to be minus 0.1.95. Now what, is, what C stands for? C stands for number of defects. Can the number of defects be negative? No, it's absurd. So what we will do, if we get LCL to be negative, if LCL value comes in negative, we have to take LCL to be 0. right? So you will have three lines 
central line 4.2 at 4.2 upper control limit at 10.35 and your low control limit will start at 0 and then we have sample number along x axis and along y axis we have the c's so we have to plot all these points and see whether the process is under control or not again this i will keep as your assignment you do it at home and you share the result with me okay so we have discussed about process control now coming back to product control product control is that part of sqc which deals with assuring the quality of the incoming raw materials or the outgoing finished goods right now when we when as a buyer when as a manufacturer we receive items from a supplier is it possible to go for 100 percent inspection of those items definitely not because it's a time consuming process right so what we do we try to draw samples from those items right from those lot we try to draw samples now when we draw the samples it is based on random sampling right now there are two causes why we uh, why we go for sampling one is definitely it's a time consuming process if you go for 100 percent inspection secondly there are certain tests which are destructive in nature so if we want to carry out those destructive tests on all the items what we have received we will be left off with nothing we will be left off with zero items right so that is the reason we don't go for 100 percent inspection we go for sampling and sampling should be also based on random sampling now there are two sampling plans which are generally followed one is called single sampling plan i hope you can see this product control uh, let me tell you one more thing the product control is also called acceptance sampling now there are two sampling plans which are generally used one is called single sampling plan and uh, uh, second is called double sampling plan in the sem single sampling plan you will be uh, mentioned with n capital n that is the lot size or the population size in this case my lot size is 150 small n that is the sample size is 10 and c the number of defectives allowed is 1 right now this value c, uh, c value will be specified it will vary from company to company and uh, depends on company's policy right we will not go into this but this will value will be specified and this is determined by the company's policy now when we receive a lot of 150 items it is not possible to for us to go for 100 percent inspection as i have mentioned earlier so what we do we randomly pick up 10 items from this lot of 150 right so my sample size is 10 my lot size is 150 now out of these 10 items if one of the item if at most there are one defective c equal to one that means if maximum number of defective is one then we accept the entire lot of 150. if the number of defectives is more than one we simply reject the lot that is how we go by single sampling plan coming back to I hope you understand this so lot size is 150 not possible to go for 100 percent inspection we draw a sample of size 10 that is my sample size we inspect those 10 sample items in the sample of size uh, 10 if the number of defectives is at most one so it can be either zero or one we accept the entire lot if the number of defectives is more than one we, stand, we simply reject the lot this is how we go for single sampling plan coming back to double sampling plan what the uh, figures we are provided with n equals to thousand that my lot size is thousand there are two sample size given n1 and n2 with two c, c1 the c values c1 and c2 so n1 is 50 c1 is 1 n2 is 40 and c2 is 3 these are the values given okay now how to interpret this how to make an interpretation of this so see my lot size is thousand it's not possible for me to go for 100 percent inspection so what i do I first with the aste I first draw a sample of size 50, right? If the number of defectives in the first sample of size 50 is at most one, maximum one, we simply accept the entire lot without going for next sample or the second sample of size 40, right? That means if the number of defectives found in the sample size of N1 equals to 50, if it is 0 or 1 
number of defectors is found to be 0 or 1, that is within this C1 value of 1, then we accept the entire lot without going for second sampling. But if it is more than 3, because C2 value is given to be 3, so if the number of values is more than 3, then we simply reject the entire lot of 1000. The figures are like this, right? I think now it's visible. So sample size is 1000. Lot size is 1000. I draw first a sample of size 50. If the number of defectives is at most 1, that is 0 or 1, we simply accept the lot. If the number of defectives is more than 3, we simply reject the lot. If the number of number of defectives is found to be lying in between these two, that is 2, or 3. If it, is, if, if it is at most 1, we accept. If it is more than 3, we simply reject. If it is in between, that is 2 and 3, then we draw another sample of size 40. Right? Now, if the number of defectives taking the two samples together is within this limit, that is maximum 3, then we accept the entire lot. Otherwise, we reject the lot. Let me, I hope you understand this. Let me take an example. Suppose I have taken first sample and my number of defectives is found to be 2. So if it is 2, then what I should do? Definitely I should take another sample of size 40. Now in this 40 sample size, if the number of defectives is 1 suppose, then 2 plus 1 total is 3. In that case, 3 number of defectives I am getting in a sample size of 90 taken together. So in that case, that is allowed. So I will accept the lot. But suppose there is a chance, so there is a case like this. In the first sample, I got two defectives, right? So that will force me to draw another sample of size 40. And in the second sample, I again got two defectives. So total number of defectives becomes four. If the total number of defectives become four, in that case, what will happen? It is crossing this value, going outside this value of 3. So, I will and I will reject the lot. I hope this is clear. Let me take another example. Suppose, in the first sample, I got a sample, uh, I got the number of defectives to be 3. Right? I got the number of defectives to be 3. So, if, since the number of defectives is 3, I will draw another sample of size 40. In this case, in the sample size of 40, if the number of defectives by chance, suppose it comes to be 0, then 3 plus 0 taken together in this total lot size, total sample size of 50 plus 40, that is 90, it is maximum 3, that is it is within this limit. So in that case, I will accept the lot. If it is more than 3, suppose in the second lot, second sample, I got a sample a defective item to be 1, then 3 plus 1 is 4, which is beyond this range and I have to reject the entire lot. I hope you understand. Okay. So this is how we go for sampling plan. Either you can go for single sampling plan or double sampling plan. At this moment, you don't have to worry about how we come out with this value C1 and C2. This is entirely based on the inspection department of the company, which, uh, which based on their policy, they decide on what should be the values for C1 and C2. Right. But how to interpret this uh, plans we should be aware of and this is how we should do how we do it now we are going to discuss a very important topic which is called oc curve oc stands for operating characteristic curve as you can see we have plotted probability of acceptance along y axis and along x axis we have plotted percentage defective in the lot so if the percentage defective in the lot is zero that means it is a very good quality lot without any defective then what is the probability of acceptance it is one yes it is one because 100 percent chance is there that the lot will get accepted but if the percentage defective in the lot increases then probability of accept, acceptance will definitely decrease right now when a buyer company receives a lot, it is not possible for him to go for 100% inspection and hence he chooses a sample out of it based on random sampling and based on the uh, observation findings on, of his uh, sampling, he either accepts the lot or rejects the lot. 
Now, if the percentage defective in the lot is very small value, then also the then also the probability of acceptance is not one. It is lesser than one, as you can see from the figure. Why? Because sample composition is by pure chance, and it may happen that the uh, buyer company has uh, picked up all the bad samples or the defective items from the sample from the lot, and his his probability of acceptance is not one, but it is lesser than one, right? So that means the producer has produced a good quality, but at times it may get rejected at the buyer company because the sample composition is by pure chance. So this is detrimental to whose interest? This is detrimental to the producer's interest and hence it is called producer's risk. That means the producer has produced a lot with small percentage defective, but it may get rejected. Similarly, it may happen that the producer has produced a lot with a, uh, a bad lot with high percentage defective shown by point P2, but still some percentage, some probability of acceptance is there, maybe 10%, right? So that means the producer has produced a poor quality lot, but at times it may get accepted at the buyer end again because sample composition is by pure chance. So this will be detrimental to the interest of the consumer who has accepted the loss and hence it is called consumer's risk denoted by beta. So as we can see producer's risk is denoted by alpha and consumer's risk is denoted by beta. Beta in this case is 0 0.10 that means 10% chance is there that the consumer has accepted a bad lot. Similarly in our case in this particular case we have put alpha to be 0 0.05 that means 5% chance is there the good lot which is produced by the producer may at times get rejected 5% chance is there it may get rejected so 95.5% chance is there that the lot will be accepted but the uh, there is a chance of 5% that uh, that the lot may get rejected which is producer's risk we have got uh, we can see two more Abbreviations are there, AQL and LTPD. AQL stands for acceptance quality level and LTPD stands for law tolerance percent defective. Now AQL, it is the fraction defective, it is a percentage defective as shown by P1 at which probability of acceptance of the lot is or probability of rejection of the lot is 0 0.05. It's very small, generally 0 0.05. I repeat, Acceptance quality level is that percentage defective in the lot along x-axis shown by P1 at which probability of rejection of the lot has a small specified value generally 0 0.05. If that is so, that means at P1, at, at AQL which is equal to P1, the probability of acceptance of the lot is 90, uh, 0.95 right whereas lot tolerance percent defective shown by the point p2 is that lot uh, percentage defective in the lot at which probability of acceptance of the lot is 0 0.10 right so we should not get confused between p uh, aql ltpd and producers risk and consumers risk Producer's risk and consumer's risk are along the y values, right, uh, y axis and AQL and LTPD are the corresponding percentage defective in the lot along the x axis. So this is very important thing and from your university exam point also this is very important concept. So with this we come to an end of this uh, class on SQC. Till now what we have discussed is we started with what is quality, then we move to what is SQC. SQC has got two parts, product control, process control. In order to understand the process control, we have taken the help of control charts. Then we have seen that for variables, the control charts used are mean chart and range chart. We have taken example also. For attributes, the control charts used are P chart, NP chart, C chart. P chart and NP chart are to be used when the sample size is given. 
C charts are to be used when the sample size is not given. Moreover, P chart can be used for both fixed as well as variable sample size, whereas NP chart to be used when the sample size is fixed. Then we have seen what is product control, which is also called acceptance sampling. 100% inspection is not possible, so we have to go back for random sampling. And then we have seen how to interpret the single sampling plan and double sampling plan. Finally, we have discussed OC curve, that is operating characteristic curve. We have seen what is called producer's risk, right? The producer, although he has produced a good quality lot, may at times be rejected at the uh, buyer's end only because sample composition is by pure chance. Similarly, a bad quality lot, right? Where the producer has produced a lot with good amount of percentage defective at times be accepted at the buyer end because again the sample composition is by pure chance and which is detrimental to the interest of the consumer and hence it's called consumer's risk and uh, finally we have also seen AQL acceptance quality level and MTPD lot tolerance percent defective one thing I would like to uh, uh, I would like to advise you that AQL and LTPD are always based on your x-axis where uh, you have plotted the percentage defective in the lot whereas producer's risk and consumer's risk is along your y-axis. With this we come to an end of SQC. I hope you have understood. If you have any questions you can always put, your, put in your comments. We are passing through a very very tough time because of this virus, coronavirus, COVID-2019. I hope you stay at home and be safe and stay at home. Okay, thank you.